everybody welcome back to another episode of ships and giggles it's business and i wanted to first address something that i have a really good example of finally uh, of how screwed up since 5.8 the damage model has been that shouldn't happen right there three overpens does not equate to 14,700 damage it's it's not possible based off of the simple structure of the game where an overpen is worth 10 percent max shell damage so 10,000 max shell damage, 1,000 damage over pens. That should have been 3,000 damage. But a regular shell pen, where it you know goes ahead and enters the side of a ship and detonates inside the ship, but not necessarily hitting anything critical like the Citadel, would equate to 33% damage of 33% uh, max shell damage. So in that case that would be closer to what you would expect with three but it still wouldn't equal that which it, it just doesn't make any sense and i don't know what the hell's been happening since 5.8 ever since they introduced the detailed ribbons it's been totally screwed up all the damage has been well not all obviously but uh the majority of the damage when you're playing the battleship is completely wrong and having six shell pens and you don't do damage, which has happened. And then turning around and overpenning somebody six times and doing 11, 12,000 damage, it doesn't make sense. The math simply doesn't add up. And so there's clearly something wrong there. Um, you know, whether it's the, the ribbons themselves, like how the game is interpreting a uh, shell being qualified as a hit, like these things are, they're miscommunicating with each other and thus miscommunicating with the player and that's a difficult thing to figure out because like i base my adjustments and stuff off the damage that i get off of uh, an enemy ship so if i'm doing overpens i know that i need to you know switch over to he or you know wait for a a more opportune situation to uh, present itself so i can go ahead and you know avoid the overpens and get the shell pens and the citadels so if the game is telling me all I'm doing is uh, overpenning, but I'm doing like you know, you know, massive damage, I I don't know what to make of it. And then when I finally do line the ship up, and I get a broadside salvo into him, and it's it shows as being regular shell pens, but I do no damage. I'm even more confused. So I would love to hear from Wargaming about this, or if anybody knows what the hell is actually happening since 5.8. Um, you know, feel free to mention that in the comments. Uh, I just, I have no idea what the hell is going on. But anyways, I do have a smith. And that's what you're seeing here with all the little pew-pews going off. It actually has torpedo pew-pews too, because uh, they're, <laughs> they're adorable little single tube launchers, and you have an 11 second reload. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty bad, but I'll say that if you get around like the edge of an island and uh, you've got somebody spotting for you while you're in smoke and you're just laying down those little single torps, uh, you're going to make somebody just juke and jive and you're going to slow them down so much that they're just going to be a sitting duck for your teammates or eventually yourself. Um, this was my first match in the, the smith as well, almost a very, very short match, is yes, that dodge. Ooh, that was close. And uh, I generally just find myself camping around, not, well, camping, hanging around. <laughs> Terminology is very important. Um, hanging around the caps and just trying to fight off the enemy destroyers because you can reset very easily with the ship because you only have a 3.1 second reload. It's not difficult to get your four guns on a single target. Uh, the ship itself is not very maneuverable. Um, it's actually quite sluggish in a lot of respects, but it's still pretty damn fun. I mean, you have these little 76.2 millimeter guns, and they're just kind of funny. <laughs> it's 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 just like a joke ship the way the Mikasa is, you know. And uh, if you want to see that joke, just wait a little longer. You're gonna see some funny matches. This is pretty much all dedicated to the Smith and the Mikasa, by the way. So um, if you wanted some some more of the giggles in 
an episode of Ships and Giggles, um, I think this is the right one for you. So uh, the stern torpedo launcher does seem to take quite a while to swing it around if you're doing some maneuvers, by the way. So just throwing that out there. Uh, don't expect that one to save you. And actually, don't expect the torps to save you at all. This is uh, definitely not a torpedo boat. Not at all. But you certainly want to emphasize with the captain skills, the guns, and increasing their effectiveness. So basic firing training. A little faster on the reload and I wouldn't go with uh, advanced firing training simply because of the fact that your shell travel time is really bad like even for US destroyers it's bad um, like what is it I know what just a few kilometers away like at four kilometers you're at two and a half second travel time so you can just imagine that six and a half the max range and then putting that up to like eight kilometers good luck I mean they're gonna have a hell of a time Hell of a hard time uh, trying to hit anything that isn't like a Mikasa that's pretty much beached. And um, yeah, it's a fun little ship though. It would be fun to get Demolition Expert on this just for the rate of fire that it has. But uh, nice little <laughs> ballsy dodge there. Uh, with this match, was in the Bogatir. I'm not actually showing you the double strike because even as double strikes are concerned, um, I was actually kind of disappointed. I could have done a little better with it, but um, the fun part here is they only have 13 points remaining, and we have all three caps. So do the manly thing, shout witness in the chat, and <laughs> go for the ram. Booyah! <laughs> now, this has got to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever experienced. So enemy destroyer is running in, right? Wabo is right here in his kamikaze yard, launches torps, misses, and barely manages to get away from the uh, ram there. My torps are on the right, and those just missed, of course. Those are heading right through the channel. Uh, Wabo launches another set of torps, barely misses, and they cut in right next to each other again. And then Yevni launches torps, which end up getting Neo. And then they both turn out again. Uh, it looks like the Nevni is trying to get behind the island here. Uh, a few more hits come in from Wabo right there, and his, his torps are right on target, which end up killing the Nevni, which leaves Wabo pretty much dead anyways. Yeah. And then we've got torps coming in, and I feel weird watching myself on somebody else's replay, but I don't know. Hey, it's me! But, uh... Things got even more fun after that, at least for me. Uh, everybody else was just kind of sitting around watching. But <laughs> So there's a Kuma, another Nyevni, and a Texas over here. And it looks like we're kind of in a bit of a pickle here. I mean, this is certainly a match that could go either way. So long as that uh, enemy destroyer is alive, I mean, there's, there's no telling exactly what's going to happen. Because I can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in the gunfight at all. And uh, certainly not while the Kuma's alive. But the Kuma, he hasn't quite learned the ways of WASD yet, and we ju did just lose another ship, so we're down 110 points. But, booyah. Thanks for playing, dude. <laughs> just walked right into him. Not the slightest bit of adjustment whatsoever. So, I did end up launching another set of torps here, but I'm just going to fast forward and... Uh, let you see how different my positioning is. My idea is to kind of get in around behind them and uh, hit them from the flank as the Texas continues to move in. Uh, my set of torps that I launched, I was um, I sent two at the Nevni, and he just came to a stop. So that was kind of weird, but I didn't quite expect that. And um, the Texas was able to avoid my torps altogether, even though I you know, I only sent one rack. So. Um, the Nyevni went ahead and smoked up his Texas, and I've got a, a bit of a bad feeling about this because things have been going pretty well for me overall, like the fact that I'm even still alive, considering all the carnage before. Something just doesn't feel quite right, and I feel like I'm just walking into a trap, and I know, because I'm detected, the Texas can shoot at me. I know that much, and I'm expecting... At any moment, he's going to appear in front of me, blah, 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 whatever, right? But it's more of the Nevni's torpedoes, because I haven't seen them yet. And I'm trying to see if I can line them up for a kill right here. I get hit by the Texas through the smoke, and there's the torpedoes. I have to turn hard to port, and I get 
my starboard launchers going here and I had to cut in hard to the right just in case his guns were uh, pointing this way and they were prepared to fire. I wanted to try to buy myself a second to uh, be able to get the torps off. Um, I fully expected him to just dump a salvo into me and kill me right after I sent those first two off. So yeah, anyways. Uh, yay, survived! But now it's time for the Mikasa. And let's be honest, it's a novelty, it's a collector ship, that sort of thing. It has horrible main batteries that are really, if anything, they're more closely related to the secondary uh, armament than the primary. You know, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, that's basically what the ship is about. I can't imagine playing the ship without a 18-point captain, because I dropped my Amagi captain in it, because why not? <laughs> um, it, you know, full secondary build, uh, BFT, AFT, I've got expert marksman, you know, superintendent, and uh, the manual uh, secondary spec, right? It, having a 3.8 kilometer secondary range is a lot of fun, but I mean, most people have wisened up to it, and unless you can ambush people, you're pretty much not going to do anything to them anymore. Um, you know, people figured the ship out a while ago, and they just barely saved that Kohlberg with secondaries from a ram. Um, that would have sucked for him, of course, but at the same time, that was a really glorious situation. <laughs> um, but. I mean, just looking at these main batteries, I mean, watch this. He got freaking nailed there. I don't know by what exactly, but probably my uh, teammate to the south. But look at this. <laughs> I mean, the fact that if these even hit within like a, a kilometer of the enemy ship that you're shooting at, sometimes it seems like a freaking miracle. And then every now and then you get like literally perfect dispersion where the shells, they leave the barrels perfectly and they don't deviate they don't separate from each other or you know go uh up or down or anything they're just perfect and you'll see a few examples of that actually in this clip but um not this clip but in the uh video today um the hashidati is getting close and i'm gonna send my main battery against him but now i got the novik pushing in and he's a little easier of a uh, target now so i switch my secondaries over to him and finish him off <laughs> And that's the wonderful thing about having the secondary build on the ship like this. You can continue to engage one on the on one side while your backside is still not necessarily protected, but you can at least dish something out and finish off the Hashidati as well with the secondaries right there. And um, yeah, upcoming in uh, patch 5.1, there's, yeah, there's pretty much um, no more tier 1s and anything but tier 1 matches. So... Um, not like it matters, they, they're they not really the ships you beat up on too much. You, like, in this, I, I had more luck against Emdins and stuff just by closing in on them. I mean, an Emden will still shred this ship if you're not careful. Uh, a Dresden, obviously. Um, St. Louis, good luck. And Bogatir, yeah. It's, they're nasty ships to face. Any of the, uh, fire breathers like that are pretty rough. But, um... I was trying to work on this Kawachi to set him up for a ram, and I totally screwed up by not cutting in further to my left. And I don't even have my secondaries active right now, but uh, he would have died if I hit him right there, actually. So, um, would have had hell of a nice damage total for a ship like this at this tier. But uh, the, the real strength in secondaries against other ships that you're not necessarily doing a lot of damage to with secondaries is the starting of fires. Uh, that's a huge factor when it comes to secondary builds and whatnot. Uh, starting fires against enemy battleships is awesome because the AP part of it isn't going to do a damn thing. And that applies to even secondary builds with the Yamato. Um, they're not going to be terribly effective when it comes to doing damage with the secondaries against enemy battleships because they simply have the armor to be able to deflect the AP rounds and whatnot, but uh, starting fires, huge factor, uh, especially if you're just, if it's able to offset the opponent's, you know, the repair, their their heal, if you, they're, you're making them use that stuff when they don't want to, you're you're doing a good job, you're, you're getting them off their game, you know, but um, yeah, secondary builds are still quite a quite a niche and uh, certainly not something you can rely upon but I will say for me they make the game a hell of a lot more fun and look at that dispersion right there double citadel yep it's possible and 
like I said, sometimes you just get the perfect roll of dispersion. And I was just lucky enough that the guy was broadside, because a lot of times it seems to just happen when they're bow forward to you and you end up missing anyways because they're much more slender target. But um, here's one of my favorite moments of the Mikasa as well. Which, if you notice something, I'm pretty much never alone in this ship. I've always got friendlies very, very close. But, yay! Close quarters double strike! Yay! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And God help anybody that just gets too close to this ship when you've got a fully kitted out captain. Um, you know, at, at the Max Ranger, it's it's a crapshoot. I mean, well, one, look at the main battery. Watch this shot. <laughs> God damn, these main batteries sometimes. They're just, it, it's like, it's like a slapstick comedy. It's like the Three Stooges, basically. That's that's what I feel is going on in the ship at all times. It's just Three Stooges. Just the Mo, Larry, and Curly. Just the stupidest shit going on. And it's hilarious. Because it, would I have been upset, like, if that guy actually had... Like, if he had torpedoes and he ended up killing me, no, I'd probably just laugh about it because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that this ship could miss at that rage. <laughs> so horribly, too. You know, my, the water cascading down onto the ship was more of a danger to him than what happened with my shells. But the secondaries, though, that's, that's different. And uh, you can see some of these shells actually going right through the ship, too, which is pretty messed up. But, you know... Um, now it's myself, Chipster, and Lord here, all three of us in the um, and of course a couple clips ago you already saw us go through the middle there, I got the, the close quarters double strike, and uh, look at all this crap going on here against this Kawachi, and uh, what I love really about secondary builds is that it gives you a lot more of a, a texture to a fight because of all the splashes going on around, like all over the place, I mean, one, this goes to show you just how wildly inaccurate these things actually are even with the um, you know the, the full captain spec and I'm gonna go ahead and take this torp because I don't really care I didn't want to uh, try to avoid the torp and uh, possibly miss out on having my secondaries continue to fire <laughs> but uh, Lord's in a bad spot here because he's got the full attention of this Kawachi and any moment boom there we go detonation Alright, and uh, we're winding down here towards the end of Ships and Giggles episode 10, and I just wanted to say this is my favorite match that I had with the Mikasa because it's 4v1 in Mikasas. This is so awesome. And uh, there's a, a cinematic angle towards the end here, actually just after this clip, but I just wanted to say I'll be holding off on doing the German reviews until, uh, German battleship reviews until after they get released in terms of one to two patches because I want the information that I talk about in the overviews to be more applicable and more relevant for longer. Um, so I figure the main changes will probably come almost immediately with uh, you know, the, the subsequent patch and uh, we can take it from there, but I do plan on doing like um, just a, a general coverage on like say 3, 4, 5, and 6. Like put that all in one video, give you a, kind of an idea of what I'm looking at and you know, what I think needs to be adjusted or something like that before committing to the real opinions with uh, the overviews. And I just wanted to say I don't know why the hell it's taken me five videos and a week and a half to finally say this, but thank you to everybody who congratulated me for placing in the Jingles contest. I really appreciate that and hopefully there's more CG trailers coming up so I can do more videos like that because it is a lot of fun. But uh, look forward to your comments though in the section below and uh, thank you very much for watching today We will have some more of the normal videos and user replays will be coming back very very soon. Sorry about the delay um, But I'll have a lot more content here coming up soon, but thank you guys, and I'll see you back here soon. Take care